um, that, that climate change for all the complicated language around it um, isn't theoretical and, and isn't something that actually people here have any difficulty with, with understanding or explaining um, to you. I was doing a bit of research uh, last week and there was someone that were producing a questionnaire and someone um, from, I think, Spain was wanting to change a question because they said, oh no, it's the term, the term climate change. Will people understand that when you're talking about it? And, and we were saying, no, like, really they will, um, not just from the projects that are ongoing around about them and the conversation in the media, but just from the real and lived experience that people have of climate change and the, and the impact of, of climate change. Um, so if we could pop on to the next slide, thanks. Um, yeah, climate change is, is not theoretical. If you go into even a most rural village, people will be able to tell you very practically, um, articulate very clearly um, what it means to them. And um, it's, it's not just that simple idea of, of hotter or colder, even as, um, as Joel explained um, largely, the amounts of rain are uh, are the same in Malawi, but they come in more intense periods in more unpredictable ways um, and in more isolated places. So here you have um, two sides of the of the impact of of climate change in Malawi, um, where it can cause both um, devastating floods and um, it can uh, similarly devastating uh, dry spells, and that has a huge direct impact. On, um, on the way of life that depends on, on the environment around, you know, particularly agriculture, um, where a whole crop could be lost um, or a yield be unpredictable or um, even something similar like, like fishing, um, where if you're unable to, to get to the lake or the population is being affected by the, the water volume uh, in the lake, then yeah, there's a direct impact on people's uh, lives and, and livelihoods. Even around Mizuzu, where we're, where we're based, uh, Jacob and I were talking in the office uh, yesterday about this presentation, um, and, and Jacob was remembering that, you know, as, as recent as, as 10 years ago, Mizuzu could, and their surrounding area could expect rain fairly consistently through the year. Um, but now, um, it has clear wet spells and, and dry spells, uh, less and less predictable. Um, and so crops that you may have been able to grow around because they relied on, on steady rain throughout the year, um, it's now not possible uh, to grow them um, at all in the area. Because, yeah, we can expect at least um, six months dry and six months wet. But when that six months begins and ends, um, is is not at all um, not at all predictable. Um, I mean, even in our in our garden at the house, um, our, our friend Felix, who helps us with the garden, um, he he always speaks with confidence. No, the rain starts in now uh, this month or that month, but um, slowly <laughs> he's, he's saying, "Well, it used to start now, um, but we just can't. You can't expect it." And um, for for livelihoods that are based on that that um, climate calendar, um, they're that much more vulnerable. Um, so if we take the next slide, thank you. Um, yeah, changing climate has an impact on many areas of, of life. Um, so just picking two as a, as a small example, um, agriculture, which I'll go on to um, speak to a little bit uh, in detail, um, over the next couple of slides is a big part of the, the life and the economy uh, of Malawi um, for people at household level and for the country as a whole. And um, this is a story I often tell if I'm asked to think about or talk about climate change was a, was a, a woman called Ida um, that I met nine years ago uh, in the south of Malawi and um, we were talking about the crops that she grew in her garden and she grows maize, a staple crop in, in Malawi. And she was saying that she used to get five bags of maize from her garden quite reliably um, from the small garden around her house. Um, and now she says she's lucky if she gets two. 
Um, and, and that for her, that is that is climate change. That's that is the, the reality of climate change. Uh, um, it's it's food not on her table. It's produce that's not there uh, to sell at market. And she can clearly measure it, not in the in the 0.2, the 0.5, the 0.7 degrees that are um, political discussions might be over, um, but just in, in the bags of bags of maize, the food that she has for herself and her family. Um, and so that means that climate change for her and for many others in Malawi is very closely linked to, to hunger um, and high levels of problems related to, uh, to nutrition. At a national level, um, the harvest uh, of maize can vary by 10 to 30 percent uh, in any given year, mostly because of, of bigger climate shocks um, like drought or, or heavy rain. And 10 to 30 percent at a, a national level means at a, a local, a community, a household level, the possibility of losing a, a whole harvest, uh, a whole year's worth of produce. Um, in, in one go and not just you, but the people in the, the area around you. So it's a, really, it's a really direct and a really harsh impact that kind of comes behind some of these figures. One less obvious way um, that the climate impacts life in Malawi is the production of, of electricity. Um, almost all of Malawi's electricity is produced by hydro, uh, hydroelectric power which relies on the water which comes into and then out of Lake Malawi. So when the water level is uh, too low, the power production uh, grinds to a halt. And we, we come to expect that towards the end of the dry season, um, that, that power will become um, less reliable. The, um, the sad impact of that is that when the water levels are low, the country then has to rely on um, on burning fuel for electricity um, instead and so is kind of um, stuck in that negative climate loop. Um, but at the other scale, other end of the scale, when, when the rain is too heavy, uh, when there's too much uh, rain, then that pushes debris into the power production plant um, or just the, the volume of water is too much for it to handle and so that will also affect um, the production of, of electricity and while it seems strange to talk about electricity because it's something that's only accessed by about 10 to 15 percent of of Malawians like power and and agriculture like are things that are key to the country's development um, and they are just frequently derailed um, and increasingly so by the impact of of climate change and while Malawi might plan to increase its power production capacity how can it do that um, if it doesn't know what the weather is, uh, the weather patterns are, are going to be like, how, where, how and where do you plan to invest your government resources um, in the development of the country when so many things are vulnerable to um, the changing climate? Uh, just look at the next slide, please. So yeah, in very simple terms, if we think just of, of agriculture um, in Malawi, the thing that's possibly easiest to connect uh, to our changing climate, then agriculture makes up uh, a third of Malawi's GDP. It's a, it's a huge part of the country's economy um, as, a, as a whole, but it's a huge part of the individual life, livelihood and, and household economy of, of Malawians as well with more than 80% of people either working directly in uh, farming in a commercial way or in the agricultural supply chain or just at a household level relying on um, subsistence farming, a small garden close to their home to produce food for their own table. And then um, that reflects in, in export with, um, with tobacco, tea, coffee, uh, groundnuts, uh, maize, all making up 80% um, of Malawi's exports, which is where foreign currency comes from, which is what stabilizes the economy, which is where opportunities for the country's development um, come from. So um, what I'm trying to do for you is, is paint this picture where, where climate change isn't 
just measured in its direct effects, but also in um, how it um, binds the lives of individual people or nations as a whole um, in the decisions that they make towards their own development and future. Uh, next slide, please. So again, yeah, the climate has a has a direct impact on life in Malawi for for many people. Um, education, the top left image is um, is a school um, in a, a lakeshore region of of Malawi that was badly affected by a, a landslide during heavy rain, um, which Jacob will talk more about in a moment. Um, Climate change affects education because it, affect, it can affect directly the education infrastructure. But if a family needs to make as much as possible out of a difficult growing season, then it can also mean children missing school to, um, to work harder on the farm to protect um, household level income and just to squeeze um, whatever the family can from, from the land. So climate change directly affects education. Um, Malawi struggles with poor roads in many parts um, of the country. Maintaining the, the good roads is, is an issue because of the heavy rain, but also building new roads um, to, to connect people to markets, to vital services is often derailed because of erratic weather patterns. Um, if, a, if a project can't be completed in time, then uh, these big infrastructure programs become um, developed and stalled because of, because of the erratic weather uh, from a changing climate. And then health also. Um, that's David Gordon Memorial Hospital in, in Livingstonia, one of the um, hospitals within the, the synod um, itself. But um, yeah, health bears the direct impact of um, a changing climate as well. Uh, similar to what Joel was saying, uh, disease patterns change for Malawi. Changing temperatures mean um, changing patterns of, of mosquito movement. Uh, more areas where they can cover longer rainy spells means more periods when, um, when the mosquito is around. And uh, so then higher risks of malaria um, but also nutrition, again, a direct impact of, um, of climate change is, is something as basic as, as food on the table. And that's something that is, that's a lifelong um, challenge. So we're talking malnutrition <clears throat> for, uh, for young children, but then people who are living longer with chronic illnesses also not having uh, the food and the nutrition that they need to, to stay strong and healthy um, also. Malawi also faces a rise in the levels of, of diabetes, partly because of um, people living longer, but also because of, because of diet. Um, and these are things that all can be um, mitigated when, when climate is predictable and you're able to have a, um, a bit more control um, over the, the diet that you have. So those are, those are direct examples, but in each of these areas, there's also an indirect um, impact of climate change. So, like I said, with with agriculture being such a big part of Malawi's economy, then there are huge financial shocks to the economy um, in a drought year or a or a flood year. The government resources have to be redirected, not just to uh, to deal with the with the crisis itself, um, but also the the long term impact on food and food supply. But that is, that is money away from Malawi's development economy. Um, that's money away from improving roads, improving health and hospitals, um, training more doctors, improving the school infrastructure also. Um, so yeah, in, in Malawi, the, um, because of the, the close link between agriculture and um, climate change, and then agriculture and the nation's economy, um, it makes the country very, vulnerable to the impact of climate change, all the way from household level, all the way through to, to national and, and government level as well. 
So I'm going to pass over um, to my colleague, Jacob in Kambui, who's our um, director of programs and has been hands-on um, with some of the projects that we have had to, to mitigate for the impacts of, of climate change at church and society. Over to you, Jacob. Thank, thanks so much, Gary, and everyone else. Um, as Gary has indicated, my name is Jacob. Um, I'm Deputy Director responsible for programs in the Church and Society program. Uh, just building on what Gary has been talking about, um, Church and Society has been uh, responding to uh, climate change emergencies, in particular uh, in one of the project areas um, where we have got a project focusing on um, children, youth, and community development. Uh, this is a it, the project is implemented along a lecture area um, and upland. We've got you know um, some mountains and uh, sometime in 20, 2019 in April, because of the same issues of climate change that we've, we've been talking about, there was some heavy, there was a heavy downpour, uh, you know, upland and the results were really thought uh, down the, the, the lecture, whereby we had landslides and these landslides, you know, um, washed away or swept villages, um, schools and, and crops and even livestock. But at the same time, you know, I think we had uh, registered eight deaths, you know, from, from these um, landslides. So. If anything, I'm, 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 I'm highlighting this just to focus on, you know, some of the effects, you know, that um, climate change may have, you know, on the uh, living. Hello. Jacob, you've muted yourself. <laughs> Jacob, if you want to talk now. Oh, you've muted. <sighs> okay. Oh. Sorry, you've gone mute. You've gone mute again. That's it. Oh. Oh, not sure what's happened here. Gary, um, oh, yeah, Jacob, can, are you back? I can continue. Okay, um, we've got another another five minutes or so, Gary, at the most. Okay, uh, Jacob, if you manage to get back to us, just keep talking, and I will and I will stop. Um, but yeah, this was a um, this was a landslide caused by heavy rain um, in a in a lecture. Um, community and so part of our responses um, church and society is sometimes in uh, linked to the emergency to the immediate aftermath of um, of a climate related um, disaster but it's also working um, longer term in the in the same communities to to help with the, the process of reconstruction and um, and rebuilding of lives and, and livelihoods. Um, if you could go to the next slide, part of the part of the issue uh, that led to um, the the large impact of this um, of this heavy rain was deforestation. And now deforestation is 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 one of Malawi's own challenges. It, it comes partly from from climate change because um, people clear land because they need to grow on more land because they're not getting as much uh, yield from the small land that, that is there. Um, but the knock-on effect is that they're not as protected um, from, from some of the climate-related problems, particularly heavy rain. So um, responding in Charo was, was also um, including um, the, the planting of, of trees and, and sharing um, trees that could um, help manage the water in the local area, but also um, uh, 
offering trees that could um, contribute to the to the livelihood um, as well. So a mixture of of trees for for reforesting and also some for for fruit growing and um, and for sustainable timber production in the local area. Um, alongside the the trees, we've also done work with um, trying to have more climate um, climate resilient approaches to farming. Um, so that could be anything from uh, from composting and and mulch to help manage um, the the fertility and the moisture in the soil, and um, to to introducing new new varieties of of, of crop. Um, so in this area, um, there was introduction of of a, a new variety of of sweet potato, which um, which grows in a in a shorter season, and so um, was less less vulnerable to uh, changing and irregular weather patterns, um, as also different varieties of um, cassava. <clears throat> Again, a, a crop that's kind of very common in, in the north and lakeshore areas, um, and, and um, changing to a variety that was more um, resilient to to drought uh, conditions. Um, the next slide, please. Um, and as, as well as um, looking at the, the land and agriculture itself, um, it's also supporting communities to develop, um, yeah, the streams of, of income that are not uh, dependent on, on farming. So this is um, the installation of, of beehives and, and training in, in beekeeping for a similar um, community in the same, in the same area. Um, to help them, yeah, develop new ways of um, of of raising income at a household and community level um, to mitigate for the losses being made in in agriculture. And again, this has been a very popular um, project, and we're um, after piloting it here. Um, both with the, the beekeeping and also uh, introduction uh, of new ways in, in chicken farming, the, the communities have really adopted um, these new activities, new forms of, of income generation. And in the coming month, we're, we're there again to, to deliver and install more uh, beehives in the, in the local area. And I can attest to the fact that Northern Malawi possibly has some of the best honey around. Um, so. Um, it's a really great um, thing to see developing. Um, Can I ask it round up? Well, I don't um, have a, a slide to uh, speak. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, um, so there are these initiatives, but like I said, um, we're, we treat climate change as a, as a cross-cutting issue um, and one that does put lots of, of pressure on a uh, on households and 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 governments, so um, we're really glad to hear um, so many people who are keen to have voices uh, of of people here in Malawi shared as part of the global climate debate. 